know where you're heading. There is one more way to know if you're flying straight. This involves using the airplane's heading indicator, as shown in this picture. To show the airplane's heading indicator, sometimes called the di directional gyro, it's found in the middle of the bottom row of the six main flight instruments that we'll be discussing soon. Think of the heading indicator as a mechanical compass that shows the way your airplane points. Notice the numbers on the face of the heading indicator. Add a single zero to any number on the face to get the airplane's actual heading. In other words, 6 is really a heading of 60 degrees, spoken as 060 degrees. The number 33 is actually a heading of 330 degrees. When you say that out loud, we say 330 degrees for extra clarity. It's important to be extra clear when you're flying. These numbers appear at 30 degree intervals. Between these numbers are 5 and 10 degree heading increments. To fly a specific heading, simply turn the airplane in the shortest direction to the heading desired. For example, turn the airplane until the nose of the airplane in the heading indicator points to the letter W for west. This is the heading of 270 degrees. Of course, if the heading remains constant, then you're flying straight and thus not turning. This is another way to identify if you're flying straight. Now that you understand the straight portion of straight and level flight, let's move on to the level portion of this maneuver. Let's talk about what happens to your altitude when, you're pi when you pitch the airplane's nose up and down. When you pitch the airplane up by applying back pressure on your joystick, the attitude indicator's miniature airplane also points upward toward the sky, the blue, as shown in this picture. The attitude indicator's vertical collaboration lines are worth 5 degrees each, so you read them from bottom to top as 5, 10, 15, and 20 degrees of pitch. Look at the altimeter, which is located directly to the right of the attitude indicator in this picture. The biggest hand, the 100-foot hand, will normally move clock clockwise when the nose is raised. And just like the hands of a watch, clockwise movement means something is increasing. In this case, it's your altitude. Directly below the altimeter is the vertical speed indicator, the VSI. Its needle also deflects upward when you pitch the nose, airplane's nose up, showing a rate of climb. There are additional indications that you're climbing and not maintaining level flight. When the joystick is returned to its center position, the airplane will begin to settle back into level flight, assuming the airplane is properly trimmed, but we'll talk about that shortly. When you pitch the airplane downward, the attitude indicator's miniature airplane points toward the surface, the brown color, as shown in this picture. The altimeter's hand will begin to unwind, rotate counterclockwise, indicating a loss of altitude. The VSI will also show a rate of descent as its needle deflects downwards. It's safe to say that if the big hand of the altimeter stops moving and the VSI needle indicates zero, that you're in level flight. In fact, this is precisely how pilots confirm that their airplane is in level flight. It takes practice to keep these meatless stationary. With the instructor, you'll practice, a, you'll practice maintaining a straight course by keeping the al attitude indicator's miniature airplane, the orange wings, parallel to the artificial horizon. If a wing dips right or left, you'll raise it by moving the joystick in the opposite direction. You'll also get some practice at maintaining level flight by keeping the altimeter's 100-foot hand stationary. It shouldn't move. If it does, then you'll use the joystick to change the pitch slightly until it stops moving. This will be the pitch attitude required for level flight. Now, what is trim? Airplanes are subject to an assortment of aerodynamic forces. Some try to pitch the nose up, others try to pitch it down. Engine power, weight placement, and lift are just a few of these forces. What does this mean to you? Well, if the airplane wants to pitch forward, you can't sit there pulling back on the joystick for the entire flight. Applying continuous pressure on the control wheel to maintain pitch attitude means your arms would tire quickly. Fortunately, airplanes have something known as a trim tab to take the pressure off the control wheel. Let's look at how the trim tab works, and then we'll talk about how to use it. A trim tab is a small movable surface attached to the main surface you want to control. In this case, it's the elevator. This picture shows the trim tab and the trim wheel that's used to change the trim tab's position. In the real airplane, the wheel is usually located between the two front seats or on the lower portion of the instrument panel. Moving the trim tab creates a slight pressure difference on the end of the control surface to which it's attached. Just enough pressure is created to keep the primary control surface in the desired position without having to hold the control wheel in place. Notice that the trim tab moves in a direction opposite to the primary control surface it affects. 
If you want the elevator to deflect upward as you're pulling back, back on the wheel on a climb, the trim tab must move down, as shown by elevator A in this picture. To maintain a downward deflection of the elevator, as if you're in a descent, the trim tab must move upward, as shown in, by elevator B in this picture. Think of trim as an imaginary hand that holds the airplane in the desired attitude while eliminating the pressure you apply to the joystick. The trim control may be found on your joystick in the form of small wheels or buttons. If you don't have a trim button on your joystick, you can use two keys on the number pad to trim the airplane for the proper pitch attitude. The in key provides nose up trim and the home key provides nose down trim. Here's how you should trim the airplane for straight and level flight. First, check to see if the airplane is already properly trimmed. Do this by easing up on the pressure being applied by the joystick. Then, watch the VSI's needle. If the needle shows a climb, rotates upward, the airplane needs nose down trim. Apply a little forward pressure on the joystick to return to level flight, then press home once for a little nose down trim. Once done, release the pressure on the joystick and see what happens. The more you push the trim button, the more trim you apply. So be patient. You may have to repeat the same process several times until the VSI ne VSI's needle remains relatively horizontal near the zero rate climb rate value. If the VSI's needle shows a descent, rotates downward, apply a little back pressure on the joystick to return the airplane to level flight. Then press end on the number pad a few times for nose up trim, or use the nose up trim button. Once done, release the pressure on the joystick and watch the VSI's needle response. Repeat the process as necessary until the airplane neither climbs nor descends. I prefer to use the VSI's needle for trimming since it's very sensitive. I mean that its needle is sensitive to small changes in pitch. To small changes in pitch. This makes it easier to detect deviations from level flight. In a future lesson, lesson I'll show you how to use the VSI's needle for trimming in a climb or descent. Many airplanes have trim for bank control called airline trim. You may even ha have this as part of your joystick assembly. Bank trim is sometimes necessary when the wing's fuel load is unbalanced, or you have heavier passengers sitting to one side of the airplane. Regardless of how well the airplane is trimmed, it may oscillate up or down slightly, varying its al altitude by perhaps 100 feet up or down. That's, why that's the way airplanes are. Each one likes to do its own thing, and may vary slightly in alt altitude and heading even when properly trimmed. Let them go, unless they wander too far off. Your job is to make the airplane as easy as possible to fly, so you have more time to think, plan, plot, and scheme your way to safe flying. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching.